Look out! Triceratops this! Whoa. Marvel Mech Strike Mechasaurs are taking over the museum in a special look paid for by Hasbro. Hello, meteorites. I mean Marvelites. I'm Josh Saleh, and I'm at the Children's Museum of Indianapolis, where I hear some Marvel Mech Strike Mechasaurs are on the loose. Ultron Primeval and his villainous T-Rex mech are taking over, so it's up to Earth's mightiest heroes to team up with their trusty Mechasaurs to save the world. Grab your blasters. It's time to go prehistoric. First things first, we need an expert at the dig site, and we have real-life paleontologist Laura Rooney here. Laura, thank you so much for being a part of this. Are you ready to hit us with cool dinosaur facts? Oh yeah. <laughs> I love it. Well, there are massive T-Rexes behind us, and they are gigantic, just like Ultron's personal steed, which is a massive T-Rex unit. Would we be safe out of his reach? Like, we're, we're good here, right? Probably not, actually. Uh, so, he might not be able to grab us, but he could still smell us from a pretty good distance. T-Rex actually had a very big part of its brain that was involved in smelling, so it has a pretty good range to be able to find anything that it wants to hunt down. Triceratops lived at the same time as T-Rex in the Cretaceous about 68 million years ago. They have these horns on their faces, two horns on their brow and one on their nose that they could have used to defend themselves against predators like T-Rex. Speaking of defensive weapons, Tony Stark actually has a mech with iron-clad plates. Check out his battle-ready mount, Iron Stomper. Laura, what can you tell us about Iron Stomper's real-life counterpart, the Stegosaurus? Stegosaurus was a really cool dinosaur. It had these four large spikes on its tail called phagomizers that it would have used to hit other dinosaurs to protect itself from them. And it also has those distinctive plates on its back that while some paleontologists think they were used for thermoregulation or to keep its body heat under control, other paleontologists think that they might have just been a display feature to show off to other dinosaurs, which for Tony Stark, a flashy feature like that is pretty, pretty on point. Well, that's awesome. He chose the right mechasaur. Absolutely. Well, let's take to the skies and soaring high above us is Captain America and Red Wing, a mech that helps Sam Wilson with his high flying abilities and makes him more than a match for any aerial foe. So Laura, I'm curious, what else would be flying alongside Captain America and Red Wing during the Cretaceous period? So while birds were around in the Cretaceous period, pterosaurs were actually the animals that were largely in control of the skies at this time. Pteranodon was actually one of the largest pterosaurs with a wingspan of about 24 feet in length. Back on the ground, we hear reports of Ultron sentries in the area, the raptors. And the museum has a display of a Bambi raptor. Laura, what can you tell us about these little guys? So, Bamaraptor would have only weighed about 10 pounds, but that doesn't make it any less fearsome. So, these guys had pretty sharp teeth and pretty sharp claws as well. They could have slashed into prey with. Well, don't worry, because you know who can keep up with Ultron's raptors? It's Black Panther and Saberclaw. The King of Wakanda and his agile panther mech make a super swift team. Laura, thank you so much for these incredible prehistoric facts today. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and suit up because we're about to have a showdown in this museum. 